Here, let's let's start. Hey, with hey you look, you're looking good with that beard, though. I give it to you. You know, you look, you kind of looking like a grown man right now. You really are. <laughs> are you really looking like a grown man that's enjoying Southern California right now? <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> what I am. Exactly. So you know, I watched the Lakers Rockets last night, and I thought these are good teams, but they're not good enough to reel off three straight wins. Like I, this looks like to me a six or a seven game series. Jim, your thoughts? Uh, it does, but but you got to keep in mind, Houston was one of the few teams. I think that maybe the only team that had a winning record against the Lakers during the regular season. So, and the Rockets give you so many problems. Now, you keep in mind, I think you said this earlier in the show. Think about you know the teams that can win. Everybody has flaws. Everybody has something that you can exploit, whether that's on an offensive end or defensive end. And Houston, you know, to their dismay, their biggest asset, which is their three point shooting, can also be their biggest deterrent when they're not making it, which allows teams to kind of either get back in the game or extend leads. And, and the Lakers, if they don't have that third, fourth, fifth guy that kind of steps up, if a LeBron James or a Anthony Davis is not playing well, then they tend to struggle. So I think that's what makes this playoff and the championship run so intriguing. It's not just one team, I think, outside the Clippers from a talent perspective that you can point to and say uh, they can just run the table. I was saying earlier, Miami's been the shock of the playoffs to me. Um, a bunch of young kids and Jimmy Butler. And I said, I don't remember a player that I've changed my opinion more than Jimmy Butler. A year ago, I was like, a little bit of a diva, doesn't get along with anybody. Uh, he's going to be a bounce around the league guy or something. And then all of a sudden now I'm like, Miami put their arms around him. He's worked his, He works his butt off on both ends. He appears to be coachable. And I'm like, I look at today and I'm like, Miami's a real basketball team. I mean, is their ceiling low? What do you make of Butler, his emergence in Miami and what he's done there? Well, first of all, with Jimmy Butler, you know, he got a bad rap, you know, leaving Chicago, going to Minnesota, kind of demanding a lot more of those young players that they couldn't really give because structurally the organization just wasn't put together that way. Okay. Then you go to Philadelphia where you have two budding superstars, but they're also young and they were held accountable in regards to not being able to take it to the next level. Uh, their play was not held to accountable. Hence, they just weren't as focused as much. The beautiful thing about Miami is this, not played there. One through 15, you're held accountable from to the higher standards from Pat Riley, who's the president now, who was my coach at the time, all the way down. And that's a big difference. So when you have a player like Jimmy Butler that comes in and said, listen, what I want, is to play hard. I want guys that want to fight, guys that want to be professional, guys that want to put the work in, okay, and and focused on winning. That's a perfect marriage that you see in Miami. That's why you can see a Jimmy Butler at times go have ten points and don't work. It's not worried about it because he understands the time, the effort, and the work and the dedication put in by his teammates and coaching staff that they can win. So it's a perfect marriage for the two. Are you surprised at all? Giannis's minutes are down. I just let's take the injury out. This this is the Eastern Conference. This is where he's the mm -hmm. best player. Are you kind of surprised it's been a little bit of a playoff dud in this series for Giannis? I'm not surprised from this perspective because one, the Heat, you know, beat this team two to one during the regular season. One game in the bubble, um, you know, that they they played, and then the other two outside of it. But structurally, how how Milwaukee is built and the way Giannis plays his game against a disciplined defensive team like the Miami Heat, there are things that you can take away. Yeah, he was going to be very effective, I think, in a game before he sprained his ankle and went out. But it's things that you can take away from Giannis to make him less effective. It, um, that's different than, say, a healthy Kevin Durant because he can beat you at multiple positions on the court and you can't close down the gap in driving lanes. I will give Giannis this credit. Unlike Ben Simmons, a person that's worked on his three-point shooting, outside shooting, the willingness to take it, I think, opens it up. But right now, this is just a tougher match. Colin, you've been around a long time. Remember when Dallas Mavericks were, I think, the number one seed or whatever it was, and then Golden State was eight? But the matchup was favored towards Golden State, and they beat the Dallas Mavericks that year, okay? This matchup is kind of favored towards 
with Miami because they match up so well with Milwaukee. Uh, and that's what makes Milwaukee kind of you kind of you kind of scratching your head. Or, uh, is this really a number one seeded team? Well, no, you can't discount what Miami brings to the table. You know, it's funny about the Clippers. You played in the league fourteen years. The, what's interesting mm-hmm. about the Clippers is how great they can be on any given night, and then just how apathetic they can be the next game. Go back to your career. Mm-hmm. Were you ever on a team like that? It, does that signal something? Like why most really mm-hmm. talented teams, Jimmy, four to five nights, you get the same damn effort. Got The Clippers mm-hmm. are all over the map. What is that telling me about their locker room, about their leadership? What is it? Well, I think more of it, Colin, is the fact that because of the resting of Kawhi and the injuries they've had, they never developed continuity. And I do think that this is a team – where the stop of the season really hurt them. And the reason why I say this, their starting core never really got a chance to gel and play, develop any kind of quant- continuity during the course of the year. If you look at the end of March, and let's say the, easy, the season didn't start, the end of March into April, that would have been their time to develop that continuity and play more minutes together. But the season got cut short. So what happens is you come back to the bubble, restart, this Clipper team was still trying to figure out their continuity, how to play together. That's why we saw the fluctuation or continue to see the fluctuation in their effort, but also their continuity on offense. Defensively, sometimes they look out of line. So that's what it is to me. They, the Lakers have been together. Their starting five have played, okay? Denver's starting five have played outside some injury late in the season. The teams, Miami starting five, have played together. So you see a difference with them, a different consistency. That doesn't mean they're going to win every game, but you don't see the fluctuations like you see with the Clippers. That's why I say the bubble or the stop, the stoppage of the season probably hurt the Clippers more than anybody else in gaining that kind of, I think, camaraderie and continuity on the court. You know, it's interesting with LeBron, and as much as I like LeBron, he can be rough on young players. He ate up Mario Chalmers. <laughs> he is really rough on Kuzma. Looks like he's lost his confidence totally. And then when you bring LeBron in, you know, he likes to play with veterans. He wants to win now. So it's hard, you know, to develop players, which is mm-hmm. ideally you'd like to have a mix like the Clippers of good veterans and good young guys. And with LeBron, you got to surround him with guys that can win now. I watch that team, and I watch Kuzma, who's deteriorated, and I don't see young players coming up. And I and I looked at myself, and I think, okay, this is it for LA. Like, if they don't win this year, this team's just old. It's not a good draft. It's not a good free agency class. I really do feel like this is it for the Lakers. This is LeBron's last title shot. Is that too hyperbolic and dramatic? Well, it's not seeing how the Western Conference is playing out, especially with Golden State State coming back healthy next year. Um, And also from a salary cap perspective and not having the draft picks, it's hard to maneuver chess pieces to get LeBron the kind of young talent that he's going to need. Now, keep in mind, this is an anomaly year. Okay, things are going to happen. The Lakers are prime position to win this. Is it going to be easy? No. But yes, the window is closing in regards to a couple of things. One, LeBron is 35 years old. That's just uh, as spectacular as he looked the other night. As you play longer, Colin, things tend to dissipate a little bit, in, in particular your skill set, just because you're a little bit older. So the, I think the urgency is to win it now because you don't know what's going to happen next year in regards to health, injuries, people leaving, not being able to get to fill out the roster the way you want, depending on free agent, the salary cap next year based off the bubble and what happened with season stoppage. So you just don't know. And right now the Lakers are in a prime position, I think, to take advantage of it. But it's not going to be easy because this is not a roster that's built around the ability for guys to make things happen. If LeBron and AD are not going and the other three or four guys have struggled, we see a different kind of Lakers team. So – It's going to be a fight uphill, but at the end of the day, when you have two of the five best players in the league, they got to figure out a way to get it done. Good stuff. Jim Jackson is back from the bubble. Uh, For the record, uh, your bubble experience, you didn't have to be there Uh as long as a player, but when you came back, um, did you feel a little trapped, a little isolated, or was it a little better than you thought? It was a lot better than what I thought, just because you you didn't know hearing from the outside, especially from a player's perspective. Again, the players were 